So you're ready to buy a 594. You saw this unbelievably famous guitar player called Buddy Blues review his PRS 594. And you thought to yourself, man, this is everything I want, except I wish it had a trim. I wish the pickups were voiced a little bit different, maybe a bit hotter. <sighs> I wish it had three knobs instead of four. And maybe I wish it, the body was a little bit slimmer and the neck was a tiny bit slimmer. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, do I have the solution for you. Yes. Oh, and also if you really want to sound like David Grissom, is up YouTube. My name is Buddy Blues and today we are talking about the PRS DGT and the PRS DG30 amp. Oh my god. If you haven't seen the video of the PRS 594, do click right here. I pretty much went through the whole guitar and what it does, why I like it. And we're gonna do the same with this one. If you don't know who David Grissom is, pause this video, call the police, get yourself arrested. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. David Grissom is one of the best guitar players today. I mean, he's one of these guitarists that they play a lick and you know it's him. Very versatile player from Texas, been all over the world playing, and he is possibly, besides Santana, maybe the OG signature artist for PRS. David Grissom and Paul got together and designed this guitar around his old 335, his vintage 335. He wanted that sound and a smaller enclosure. He wanted that neck. He, I mean, they went to lengths. I'll link a video down below of both of them, Paul Reed Smith and David Grissom, talking about that guitar and how they got there and talking about this amp as well. So the DGT and the 594 are very similar. They are both voiced like vintage double humbucker instruments. I am not affiliated with PRS, so I am allowed to say Gibson, I'm allowed to say Les Paul, I'm allowed to say 335, and I'm allowed to say Strat. It seems like every video of PRS that I watch, they just avoid those words like it doesn't exist. Like, okay, you're doing something new, you're doing something remarkable, we get it, but these guys are still around, okay? Right, so the 594 essentially is a vintage Les Paul, let's just say it. It's a, I, in my opinion, I like it better than a Les Paul because of how it plays, let's not get into that. It's a vintage Les Paul, or what a vintage Les Paul should sound like and play like. Same thing goes for the DGT. It's supposed to be that vintage Les Paul vibe. It's supposed to be the 335, that, that very open humbucker sound. What people rave about the most when it comes to the DGT are the pickups. Everybody has told me that you need to try that guitar out because the pickups are out of this world. Whenever you split the bridge, it sounds like a Strat. It, it's unbelievable. And I, and I believe it because with this one, with the 594, whenever I do split the humbuckers, it sure sounds like a single coil. The volume doesn't drop and the DGT does that just as well. David Grissom wanted the neck pickup to have that middle of the neck Strat, you know, that, that, that sound that everybody knows and likes, the John Mary big neck pickup sound. He wanted that in a double humbucker guitar and they achieved that and he wanted the bridge to have a lot of punch and boy does it have a lot of punch oh my god also if you're interested in me doing a versus video 594 versus dgt let me know in the comments down below if you're interested in watching that so that i can make a video for you okay mm -hmm. so the guitar has three knobs instead of four on that one um volume volume and a tone and is it this one and a split for the bridge pickup Right off the bat, things I don't like. The switch. I do not like where the switch is. That's weird. You're playing and then the switch is down there. That's weird. I like when the switch is where Les Paul is or where the 594 is, but my favorite obviously is a Strat because it's right there. You can just pinky it. Another thing I don't like is that the split only happens on the bridge pickup and not the neck pickup. I haven't seen a single YouTube video that tells you that. I don't know why, but yeah, so that only splits this. If you want to buy this guitar, you think you're, you're, the split works on both, it doesn't. Another thing I don't like, because people say I'm always too positive in my reviews, okay? Hmm. Another thing I don't like is that this volume knob goes to the bridge. I mean, that's, again, that's what David wanted because he does a lot of swells and all that and he's amazing at that. I suck at it. So, I don't really like that here. I wish this was a neck bridge 
tone, but it isn't. It's bridge volume, neck volume, master tone. Things I like, trim. A trim on a 594. I never thought I'd miss it when I got my 594 a couple months ago, but now that I've played this, I really wish this 594 had a trim. Not had a trim, had this trim, because this is one of the best tremolos I've ever tried. If you've ever played a Duesenberg, they've got a really nice trim. I think this one's nicer because it's got that tight, but you barely have to touch it and it starts moving. And, and this guitar is set up really well as well, so that helps. Another thing that I've heard a lot of reviews talk about is how different the neck is from the 594. It isn't. Okay, <laughs> it's just a bit slimmer and it's a bit smaller. I didn't feel like it was night and day like everybody describes, but it, it, it's not that different. The 594 is a chunkier neck, yes, but the width is what they're talking about. But then again, I've never been a person that cared about nut width or any of that, so maybe it's me. It's probably me. And that's essentially the guitar. It's very similar to a 594. It's a bit more versatile than a 594, and I love it. Now, as for the amp, oh my God, oh God. Here it is, DG30, 30 watts, DG stands for David Grissom as well. We're on a David Grissom kick tonight. It is supposed to be a plexi. It's supposed to sound like a plexi, and it really does. Now, you've got this lovely little maple finish thing here on the amp. I don't care, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you right away what I don't like about this amp. I would like to show you the knob layout, you know, like on every amp on earth, but I can't because it's here. For some reason, PRS decided, the company that innovates in an unbelievable way has decided to put the knobs on top. Meaning, if you have an aux box, which I do, or another amp, which I do, or another amp that's ahead, which I do, you can't put it on top of this one. This one always has to be the one that's on top. Well, what's the problem then? Okay, it's too wide, okay? It's wide, it's very wide, okay? So nothing can go on top because the input is on top as well, so you're gonna have a jack coming out right, like just like that. And if you don't live in a mansion and you have two amps and you wanna put this one on top, this one doesn't sit on top. Like take a standard Fender or a Marshall that width, this one is way wider and way chunkier. This is a design thing, I get it. If you put it on a speaker cab on its own, it's all right, but some of us have several amps. That's annoying. Anyway, <laughs> so you're gonna have to believe me when I tell you the knob layout. You've got a bright switch, which I love, a volume, reverb, treble, middle bass, and a master volume so that you can crank the channel and tame it with the master volume. Great. On the back. <laughs> oh God. Hi. On, off, standby, blah, blah, blah. You've got your presence knob right here on the back. This is for biasing. Don't do this, you will die. You've got a boost or a normal. For the sake of this review, we're gonna keep it on boost. And you've got a top cut, kind of like a Vox amp, but just takes out the highs a bit, I think. Kill me in the comments if not. And your eight ohm, blah, 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 16 ohm extension. Everything is uh, really cool here. And the coolest thing is you got fans. You kidding me? This amp has fans. Unlike me. So let's get to it. PRS DGT into the DG30. Let us play this thing. I'm gonna put the Oxbox not on top, because I can't. I'm gonna put the Oxbox on the side, but believe me, there's gonna be an Oxbox, okay? Okay. Gonna run it through a virtual 412 cab. Um, let's get to it. Oh, and to give the amp a little bit of extra je ne sais quoi, I'm going to put the November gain in between the guitar and the amp so that we can give it a little bit of oomph. If you haven't seen this pedal yet from October Audio, oh, ladies and gentlemen, Kirk here. You're gonna love it.
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you have now heard the PRS DGT and the PRS DG30 amp. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Did you enjoy this video? Was it too much David Grissom for you? Is it ever too much David Grissom? But really, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, subscribe, do the whole shebang, help this channel out. We're growing, ladies and gentlemen. We're growing little by little, step by step, baby steps. Thank you so much for watching. If you want me to play the 594 and the DGT, give you a little bit of comparison, tone comparison, in the next video, where I won't talk so much, because a lot of you complain that I talk too much, let me know in the comments below. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been Buddy Blues, and you have been the people of the blues. Until next time, thank you for watching.